Have you ever wondered what it's like to import a car into the US from another country? It's something I've always been curious about my entire life and it always looks like it's full of really complicated tasks, a lot of fees and a bunch of paperwork. Um, yeah, it just seems like a mystery, but it's something I wanted to see if I can figure out myself. So this year, I set out to import a car from the UK into the US. And I didn't want to just buy a car that was already imported or use a company that finds the car for you, buys it for you, imports it for you, and then you pay them. I wanted to do as many of the steps myself that I possibly could. So in this video, I'm going to go over all those steps in terms of finding the car, paying for the car, getting the car scheduled on the ship, getting the car inspected and through customs, picking it up, getting it registered and on the road. And hopefully you'll find something uh, useful in this video. So let's go ahead and go over all those steps. So the first step was figuring out what kind of car I could buy. So I searched the custom site. I called them a couple of times. I asked them over and over again, what are the rules? This story is really clear. Um, and each time I called, they strongly recommended getting a customs broker. Uh, basically saying that's the only way to get a car in through customs is through a broker. So we'll get back to that in a little bit. But in general, the car should be 25 years or older, and that's from the manufacturer date, not the model year. And it has to uh, kind of be close to stock. It can't be heavily modified from its original spec. Now, I do think there was an exception in there where you could import a car that was 20 years or older, um, and that would require you to actually get it individually certified by the EPA and uh, another body, and it, again, depends on your state, before you could import that. So in general, let's just stick to the rule of the car needs to be 25 years or older in order to import, not heavily modified, especially in the uh, bumpers and safety features of the car. So now that we know roughly what the rules are, I began the search around January, um, and I found a couple of useful sites, but one of them that was probably the most useful for my type of car was uh, the site called carsandclassics.co.uk. And they had uh, listings for the type of car that I was looking for. You probably don't even need to guess what type of car it is. And one really useful feature about this site is the ability to set up safe searches. So every morning I wake up, I check my inbox, and I have an email of uh, all the new listings that match my search criteria. One very helpful aspect of this whole process was having a friend named Peter um, over in the UK. You see, most of the time when I emailed people and told them I wanted to uh, import the car to the US, they uh, usually stopped responding, whether they uh, thought it was spam or they just didn't want to deal with the whole process. And this is where my mate Peter comes in. See, he, uh, he was able to go and check out some of these cars in person for me. So I'd let the sellers know that I was going to send my friend Peter. He'd go check it out with a detailed list of things to look for and let me know if he thought it was good. Hello, Peter. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Are you, uh, you, you, you feeling awake? I'm, I'm awake, yes. <laughs> I'm going to put you on video. Okay. Um, so you are wearing something, are yes, you? Yes, yes, I'm fully dressed, ready to go. <laughs> Best I've ever seen, to be honest, Nick. Mm. Um, it's, it's all around the UK, so you can get a lot of It is, it looks beautiful. You've taken good care of it. Okay, <laughs> a lot of pressure. It's all original. My, I want to make sure that it's all original because of the import rules. You know, they, they are really strict about what we can import here. If there's any modifications, yeah, I agree 100%. So I, I'd be willing to pay the asking price um, if you're willing to sell it to me and, and work through that process of, it, it might I, I might need to have you mail me a the V5 in the logbook. Um, if, if you're willing to do that, then I'm willing to, you know, get you the money as soon as we can and, and get that process started, so. If you want to get in touch with me and Peter to uh, use him in the future, let me know in the comments down below or uh, reach out to me on Instagram. If you can find me as the mini vlog there and uh, just send me a DM there and we'll get you in touch with Peter and he, uh, he'll be able to help you out with some of that stuff in the future if you want to do uh, an import as well. Hey Peter, how's it going? Good, good to see from you. I've been driving the classic around for weeks now since you helped me uh, get it. So yeah, it's been tons of fun. So. Oh, fantastic. I'm really pleased with that. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think we were very lucky. We lucked out. I was a, it was a great find. It's in great shape. And yeah, I, everybody that sees it is just astonished at that. I actually got that and happened to do zero work to it. So yeah, it was a good find and glad you were able to go check it out near you. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it was a couple of hours away, mm -hmm. uh, but it was well worth the trip. Yeah. Um, it really was. I mean, he, he, um, yeah, I, I, I just really got this good feeling about it. I took my checklist with me, so I didn't forget anything, um, because it's very easy when you're looking over a car to get wowed by something and you yeah. get distracted, but, so you have to keep your, keep your focus. Yep. So, I'll catch you later, Peter. Yeah, cheers, Nick. All right. Take care. All right, bye. bye. So once Peter helped me find the perfect car, we're on to the next step, payment. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that, and I learned a lot about those in this uh, process. There is, you know, things like Wise and Zelle and Venmo, and, and sometimes you can even go to your bank, and the bank will do a bank transfer to a foreign bank. Um, and this is kind of where I made a little bit of a mistake. I had the funds, but they were all separated into different accounts. So I spent a lot of time transferring money between accounts. Some accounts worked with some services and some didn't. And I really wanted to get the money there fast because the seller had other interested parties. So I ended up going with a, a kind of a combination of uh, using WISE and bank transfers to get the money to the seller. So if you're gonna try this yourself, make sure you have all your money uh, ready to go in one account and know what services are available for transferring that money from that account uh, to the prospective seller. And at this point, it's uh, mid-July. I've sent the money over to the seller in several payments and we're at July 25th. So now that I got the car purchased and paid for, which was a bit of a process, I now need to find a way to get it shipped across the Atlantic uh, over here to the US. And I found uh, this great place with the help of my friend Peter, again, called Auto Shippers. And they are not sponsoring this video. And you're gonna hear me talk highly about this company throughout the video, because they were one of the greatest companies I've ever worked with. Usually when you get to work with a company that specializes in something, they're all experts, and they can sometimes be grumpy at answering your questions, but not these guys at Auto Shippers. These folks, when I called them, and I called them multiple times, were extremely happy to answer my questions um, about the car, shipping process and, and even questions that weren't totally related to shipping. These, these folks were just enthusiasts and were great to work with. I can't speak highly of them enough. They're very clear and upfront in their pricing and scheduling process as well. And I even asked them to take some extra video when the car was in port and they happily did that. They sent somebody down and uh, they walked around the car with a, with a camera and, and took a video and sent it to me, which is going above and beyond for what most companies would do. So if you're ever thinking about shipping a car from the US to the UK or even in the opposite direction, get in touch with these guys at Auto Shippers, a great bunch of people there. I can't recommend them enough. So I put that information in the booking form, but I just wanted to make sure that it made sense. And, and... Okay, thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. I will, uh, I will get those things in order and uh, look for that quote and we'll proceed from there. So thank you very much, uh, Dave, for your help. I appreciate it. So at this point, the car is paid for and ready to be picked up. And so I'm working with auto shippers to uh, help me with this, all these questions that I have and, and getting the car picked up, delivered to port. Um, they're scheduling it on a ship. They're walk, making sure it looks clean and, and, and it's not going to fail inspection. And it has all the proper paperwork. They're letting me know that I need to have the original V5 and bill of sale from the seller and then upload uh, copies of those into their system. And so after the car is in port and, and just kind of waiting for the ship, we also need an import broker. And uh, every time I called customs, they talked to me about uh, needing an import broker. And I, I, you can, I think, become a broker yourself, but it's a long process to become a broker yourself in order to do, the, to do this process. So hiring a broker is, is what you need to do. And luckily, auto shippers, again, they come with a, a, a broker they already work with and they uh, set me up with her. Her name is Katrina at Pride Baltimore, and she was just as helpful as, as the folks at Auto Shippers. She answered my calls many times, multiple times, where I asked questions over and over and over. I wanted to make sure that this process was gonna work and I wasn't gonna be out a bunch of money and, and lose a car. So at this point, I have the ship uh, scheduled, the car's in port. It's been you know once over by the folks at Auto Shippers. All the paperwork is in the car, ready to go. And now I have a broker that knows the situation is just waiting for the car to come in and is ready to file the paperwork at the appropriate time because you need to file it uh, within a certain time before the car arrives in, in to customs. So all we could do is just wait for the uh, ship to arrive in port in Southampton where the car is located, pick it up and then start to travel across the uh, Atlantic, um, which feels like an eternity at this point. We're in August and I've been waiting for a while now. Uh, but there's not much you can do. It's 2021. Everything is behind schedule. 
But eventually the boat arrives and it picks up my car in Southampton um, as it's supposed to and begins its journey across the Atlantic to uh, the port of Newark, New Jersey. And it takes around two weeks, which is pretty quick considering. And at this point we are about eight months after I started this process in January. We're about in um, beginning to middle of August. So the car is on the boat, it's heading across the Atlantic and the next step is for me to go pick it up. There was just one small problem with it uh, arriving a little bit later than normal. Um, it arrived quite literally the same day that I was uh, boarding a plane in the JFK airport, flying right over the Newark port where it arrived on my way to Munich for a week. Now the folks at Custom will give you five free days after they've passed it through their inspection process. And after that, you get charged a fee each day. And obviously that fee goes up the longer it's there. And again, I can't speak highly enough here of the folks at Auto Shippers and Katrina, the uh, broker from Pride Baltimore that Auto Shippers works with. She took care of all the paperwork that needs to be submitted at the proper time because it needs to be submitted in a timely manner upon arrival and uh, got the car cleared through um, just a few days after it got offloaded from the boat. So now I just need to get back from Germany so I can go down and pick up my car. The minis are right down there. So the next step when I returned was finding time to go down there and pick up my newly imported car. Now there's a bit of an issue during this process. And if you've seen my Countryman video from a few weeks ago, that was what it was related to. It broke down on the way there, turning a six hour trip into about a 14 hour trip. But when I arrived in port, I had all my paperwork in hand, uh, had my customs clearance. I went to where the car was located, uh, turned in my paperwork and they uh, just, let me loose in the uh, car storage lot to find the car, which was kind of cool. Here we are in port going to grab the car in this collection of cars. So we just got to find out where it is first. So I found the car, first time seeing it in person. It wowed me. I got to drive it maybe a quarter of a mile down the street to the trailer. Um, we loaded it up on the trailer and we started to drive home with it. So now we have the car, we're onto the last and final step of the actual registration of the car. And now this is gonna be different from state to state, but this is what uh, the process was like in New York where I live. I go to the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles in my town, and I bring them the V1 logbook, which is the essentially UK equivalent of a title, and the bill of sale and my customs paperwork that has cleared this car for import into the US. And so I hand them all my paperwork with all my new forms filled out to pay my taxes and get this car registered and we hit a snag. So my small town DMV had never seen a V1 or logbook before from the UK and they weren't really sure how to handle it. They didn't think it was proof of ownership of the car because it said the previous owner's name and they wanted that V1 in my name, which is impossible. I'm not a British citizen. The car's here in the US with me. I can't go get that in my name. So this is where the great folks at Auto Shippers come in yet again. Like, I mean, this is how excellent their service is. They didn't need to help me at all. The import process was already complete. I had the car, they'd done everything they needed to do, but they still took my call and answered my questions I had about how you sell a car privately in the UK from one UK owner to another, just so I could better understand what the process was like for the next time I go back to the DMV to try to explain to them that I do actually have the proper paperwork to register this car. So after a second failed attempt at my DMV, I decided to go to a bigger city that has probably seen a V1 before. I go to the next biggest city and I bring all my paperwork and without hesitation, they register the car. They had seen it before, they knew what they were looking at and they gave me the registration, new license plates, temporary inspection that I needed to get this car on the road and driving. So my import process was finally complete. I've learned all the ins and outs of how to import a car now, and it's, it's not as scary as it's often made out to be, but it is a little bit challenging. You do need a lot of time to work through all this paperwork and find a car you wanna buy and, and, and work with a seller and transfer money and get a broker. So yeah, there's a lot of steps to the process, but it's not impossible and you can do it. If you have any questions about it, leave them down below. I'm, I'm no expert, but I can maybe help you out and point you into the right direction for some people. And again, I highly recommend Auto Shippers. They're a great company. They work with Katrina at Pride Baltimore and she's a great broker. And if you need some boots on the ground in the UK to look at some cars over there, uh, get in touch with me and I will get you in touch with my mate Peter and he is a great resource. Great car guy, very meticulous. Uh, couldn't have done it without him. So yeah, at this point, my import process is complete. I can drive the car on the road legally and it's a blast. And if you wanna see the car, you're gonna to have to subscribe and hit that bell and come back next week because I'll give you the full look at the car. For now, you can just see that it has a white roof. How's that for a little bit of clickbait? So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And as always, when you see other minis out there, especially this one, don't forget to wave. I'll catch you in the next one. 
Oh, and if you're wondering about price, I didn't really mention it because it's really dependent on the uh, sale price of the car. That really affects all the taxes and, and other prices that you're gonna pay. But if you really need to know, uh, get in touch with me on Instagram, send me a DM. I will tell you the exact prices that I paid for every step of the way, um, as long as you keep in mind that it's a percentage based off that sale price. So yeah, quick note about prices. I know some of you are curious. And now that's it, because you've seen too much of this interior already. So come back next week to see it all. I told you why he bought that car. Um, he was going to convert it into a Paddy Hopker uh, rally replica, and uh, so he'd been, he had been looking for a long time for a good one that he could then retro back from 91 to 1967. Uh -huh.